Today on UV Design Tips and Tricks, we show you how to create a cPanel account on your VPS dedicated server. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. First of all, I'd like to apologize for how long it's taken for me to put out another video. Uh, there's a lot of been a lot of changes been going on at UV Design Media. Uh, first of all, we moved, had to sell a house, and go through that whole process, um, and then just a lot of uh, business decisions of where to take the company and just getting everything kind of on board and put in the line and unfortunately uh, these tutorials kind of had to be put on the back burner but we know we've got everything situated everything's good to go um, nothing's going to be stopping just a lot of exciting things happening for us as a company uh, so that's pretty exciting and awesome for us but uh, for these tutorials we're back on track to get them back rolling out for you again. Um, if this is your first time watching, my name is Carl. I'm co-owner of UVDesign.media. Uh, I worked for GoDaddy. Well, I used to work for GoDaddy for two and a half years as a hosting tech, uh, hosting tech lead. So I have a lot of experience with uh, servers, troubleshooting issues for websites. Um, and I thought it would be a great way, these tutorials would be a great way to help people that have a lot of issues. Um, a lot of people would call them the same type of issues. And even online, I see a lot of people with a lot of same issues and it's hard for them to find the correct answers. Um, so hopefully we'll give you a little guidance into getting those issues resolved. On Mondays, uh, we will be releasing tutorials on how to create websites. We were just doing WordPress, but then I was like, why just do WordPress? I don't even create just WordPress sites, right? I create mostly Adobe Muse and WordPress sites, and there's multiple ways to create websites out there. So we're gonna take a look at all of them, right? Maybe see what's the best solution for you, uh, because what's ever best for you might not be best for the other uh, website out there. So that's what we do on Mondays. And then on Wednesdays, we do everything else that has to do with websites that's not creating them right which would be like dns hosting vps dedicated servers emails right all those things that tie into everything that's not website creation because that is the other half of your website is making sure it's accessible and whether tools are out there to make it accessible and how they work so last tutorial we left off was how to create custom name servers um and I know that was a big one because that's kind of confusing, right? There's multiple steps. So if you haven't checked it out, go do that. Now we're going to do is how to create your cPanel account inside your VPS. I use GoDaddy as my hosting company. Obviously, I work for them. Um, you know, again, whatever you use works great. Um, so in this interface, you can see we have 14 cPanel accounts. Go ahead and access your server any way you do it. Click Manage Server, and then you'll be taken to uh, your WHM if you have a Linux-based server. WHM is the interface for the entire server itself. cPanel is the interface for the ex uh, for the hosting entity for a specific website. Um, my, my helpful hint, well, this is multiple helpful hints, but I suggest that if you're going to host multiple websites on your server, do not have them under one cPanel account. You want each domain name uh, like these to have their own cPanel install. It's easier to maintain and it's just an overall better experience uh, for that particular website. Now, I'm not saying if you have variations of, let's say, casualfair.net.us, they all can point to this, but I'm saying you don't want to put a casualfair.band, carlbush.com, cedarmeterproductions.com, chambersmanagementinc.com under all the same cPanel install because first of all these are going to be all different clients and you don't want them to share the same space and second of all it's just easier to manage this way. So anywho back to WHM go ahead in the little search field type in create and you're going to see create a new account create a new account is creating a cPanel account. You'll want to go ahead and in the domain section go ahead and put in your domain we're going to use River City Throwdown uh, for the username, it's going to kind of pre-populate, you know, an X amount number of characters. Uh, I'm not really digging that. Uh, River City throw that, you know, let's make it a little easier. River City. Go ahead and just use a password generator. 
uh, makes it really easy. Um, and then I have a password vault where I keep all my passwords at because I'm not going to remember that. And I do suggest that you use a generated one because most people's passwords are pretty horrible, you know, pretty easy. Um, again, I work for GoDaddy. I've seen a lot of a lot of passwords that people use that aren't just really secure. So use that generated one. Makes life a little simple. And then go ahead and put an email address in here. Any email address that you have access to. I mean, it can be your client's email address. Again, this is for like a lost password for cPanel. And any important information that might be given out to that cPanel. Again, if this is going to be your client's website, use your email address so you get any information relevant to cPanel itself. Because your client gets it, has they might not have any idea of what's going on. And then for package, uh, packages are different ways of packaging uh, cPanel. cPanel has a lot of uh, buttons and choices and interfaces inside it individually that you can change individual things like DNS, add email accounts, a lot of things. Uh, so you can tailor it to clients, you can tailor it to yourself, you can use it as a default. Uh, there's a default one. I've made a couple of my own and we're actually going to cover that in the next tutorial uh, for next Wednesday. So let's go ahead and just do pro. Pro is my own uh, because this is not going to be the client's cPanel account. They won't have access to it. They don't want access to it. So I'm going to manage it myself. Uh, cPanel theme, paint whatever you want. Paper lantern. If you want other ones, you can install those. I'm happy with this. Reseller, we're not going to make this into a reseller account. That gives that gives the capability of letting someone else create other cPanel accounts for other people. I'm not going to deal with that. Uh, let's see here, DNS settings. Uh, we'll go ahead and enable SPF. Uh, name servers, these are the custom name servers that we created in the last tutorial. So whatever you did, that should be the default right here. And then mail routing settings. Uh, easiest way for me to explain this is on all websites or almost all websites, you have a contact form. When that contact form creates an email to be sent out to you for notification of this, you know, someone signed up for a subscribe list, someone purchased something, or someone just wants to ask you a general question, the server needs to know what to do with that email. And I mean, there's four choices here. But you should know from the get-go of what it's going to be. Either A, it's going to be local, which means your cPanel account is going to host your email, which I do not recommend. cPanel is just kind of a little wonky for email. Again, email is just a function or a feature of cPanel. That's not its main job. Your server, this server that we're looking at right now, is not, email is not the main priority for it. Your main priority is, um, Hosting. So let it do its own job and have another email client. Uh, so if you do use cPanel, which is fine, um, just uh, you know local mail exchanger, so so the server knows to send that email locally onto the server. Uh, remote mail exchange. That's what you should normally be using. Uh, that's if you're using Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, uh, Office 365 email, uh, basically something that's not your VPS cPanel email be in the server so the server knows to say well this email doesn't sit on server let me send it out to the world I mean you can use our automatically detect basically what that means is it's just going to look at your MX records and say are these cPanel MX records or are these something else and then send it out that way so you can use automatic local or remote we're just going to head to remote because I know for guaranteed I know for guaranteed I know guaranteed that it will be sent out remotely I'm going to go ahead and create. And now we get a, a VPS log of showing you everything the VPS did in a whole whopping two seconds. Everything looks great. We don't really have to go over this stuff. Um, you know, I've actually never had it not be, not be, geez, not look like this. Again, a lot of rust on these wheels from doing tutorials. Uh, so everything looks great. So you're going to go back here. It says cPanel sites 14. Go ahead and refresh this bad boy. And now we have 15. Fantastic. So cPanel got that created. Uh, River City Throwdown. Back to the alphabet. This is all off book order. And we have this right here. Now, if you do have GoDaddy, here's another reason why you want to. Uh, um, have all your primary or all your domains as a primary individual cPanel. 
as of right now, this tutorial, 8.17.17, GoDaddy still has contracts with Site or SiteLock to integrate SiteLock's product into the VPS servers. Yes, I know GoDaddy bought out uh, Sakuri uh, earlier this year, but the contract between SiteLock and GoDaddy is still in place, and GoDaddy still has to offer SiteLock on VPS servers. So, anywho. SiteLock is a malware scanner and it comes free with each individual primary domain that you have installed on cPanel. I've seen people with 80, 90 cPanel installs, they all get a free SiteLock. Now, we're not going to go into the discussion, is SiteLock the best malware scanner out there or whatever. We're just going to go, going to say it's free and why not use something that it's free. So, again, it's better than nothing. So, anyways. Change of progress means it's doing its stuff. Um, activate site backup. I have that. Again, you should always have some sort of automated backup system. Mine backs up every day. It keeps up to 30 days worth of backups. Again, it's a small price. Your clients will be happy. You'll be happy. So just do it. And then you can go ahead. Two ways to get to your cPanel account. You can go through this access panel. Just click cPanel. And it will automatically... Uh, Let's see, take you to cPanel, get this little pop-up message, that's fine. And now you have all of these interfaces or interactions that you can do inside cPanel. Again, this is my pro package one, so it gives me access to basically everything. I would not give my client access to, I don't know, half this stuff. Because first of all, most people never use it. They have no idea what it does. And second of all, you don't want them poking around where they don't belong right they break something they call you and you have to fix it so why give them access to everything so anywho that's it that's how you easily create a cPanel account oh yeah the second way to access um, cPanel is that you just go to your domain and you get this default uh, landing page again there's no content in here so it can't load anything properly so let's say you need to give access to another developer access to your your client wants access to cPanel right to do whatever they want to do uh, just be the domain name forward slash cPanel go to advanced say it's okay Now your cPanel uh, login comes up. And if you look at the URL, you can do you know domain name port 2083. But again, just the domain name forward slash cPanel, same thing. Uh, the username is River City. We'll go back to my little password vault thing that you can't see. Paste the password in there, log in, and boom, bam, shazam whatever you're inside cPanel account again that gives someone access to just that particular cPanel account they can't see anyone else's they can't access your server access your GoDaddy HostGator Bluehost WhoHost whatever host account that you have just that uh, instance of cPanel install and that is how easily you create cPanel so awesome well thanks for watching guys um, uh, if you would like, go ahead and if you would like, I would like it if you went ahead and subscribe uh, to our channel so you can view some more awesome videos on tutorials for website creation and hosting uh, tips and tricks. Uh, if you found this video useful, it would be great if you gave us a thumbs up in the bottom there. And yeah, again, sorry for the delay, but uh, we're a little bit more on track this time and we'll get some more great tutorials out to you guys. So until next time, take it easy.